Why didn't the plumber go to college? He was told it was just a pipe dream. That's right, today's video is all about pipes, more specifically warp pipes. So a big ol' welcome back to all you nerds out there, and thank you for joining me for one of the most iconic elements of the Super Mario universe, the warp pipe. These are special tubes that allow Mario to instantly travel from one location to another. They come in all shapes and sizes and can be found in many different levels in almost all types of Mario games, to include even Mario Kart. Warp pipes can move you forward on the map, to secret areas, or even both at the same time. In some sense, warp pipes are always hidden, and Super Mario World is no exception, as they are hidden in plain view, since there are a plethora of warp pipes that don't even warp. Honestly, I'm not even sure if they pipe. So how do warp pipes work? What allows Mario to enter a warp pipe and magically appear somewhere else? Well, this is where you come in as the developer. So without any ado, let's jump on in. First, you're gonna to need to create the actual pipe object. This will be a sprite with the graphics of a pipe. We're gonna to wanna to give this a solid behavior. I'll be using the platform behavior to do this. And once added, you can design different types of pipes such as different colors or just super large pipes that you can use as walls. And now we're ready to tackle the coding. Don't worry, I'll make this as easy as jumping on a Goomba. <sighs> Sorry if my crappy pun blocked your creative pipes. Yeah, that was a pun. Apologizing for another pun. You're very welcome. Anyways, to make pipes teleport Mario, there's going to be a few prerequisites that are required to be in place first. For one, not all pipes allow you to teleport. So the ones that do will need to be pre-coded. Next, pipes tend to lead to a specific spot. So we're going to want to set up coordinates for the pipe's final location area. And since we know the pipe will lead to another pipe, instead of just putting an X and a Y location, instead we're going to use the X and a Y location of that new pipe, which will allow us to just pick a specific pipe. So this way, if we want to edit our maps further down the road and we want to move a warp pipe, we'll still be teleporting to the correct location and we won't have to go into our code and update our coordinates. So each pipe is gonna need three variables. One, can Mario enter this pipe? This will be a bouillon, and I'll be calling this can enter, and it'll be set to false. Two, a destination value. This will be a number called destination with default zero. And finally, an arrival value. This will also be a number called arrival with a default value also of zero. And next, for each pipe we're gonna to wanna to have active, we'll change the can enter bouillon to true, and set the destination value to a unique number. Then on the pipe we want Mario to move to, we'll set that arrival number to that same unique value from the previous pipe's destination. That way they have a one for one value, which will take them from their start to their final location. And the last prerequisite I did was create a warp hitbox, much like the face block hitbox or bounce check that I made in my previous videos. This is a 17 by two object that's gonna be set invisible and it's just gonna lay right on top of the warp pipe because we don't want Mario to teleport through the warp pipe unless they're directly on top of it. And with that, everything is set up and it is time to jump into the code. We're gonna start out with a at beginning of the scene and we're gonna repeat this for each warp pipe and we're gonna go ahead and check if they have can enter set to true. And if they do, we're gonna set that warp hitbox on them. Then we'll go ahead and hide those. Next, we'll do our check to see if Mario is able to warp. So if Mario's in collision with the warp pipe and also with that warp hitbox and the boolean value is set to true for can enter and then the down key is pressed, which is something to keep in mind since you can warp upwards, you'll have to make a separate event or a separate condition for down or up key is pressed depending on the direction the warp pipe is facing. And if these are true, we're going to deactivate the platform behavior because we want to take Mario and essentially freeze him this way we can force his animations. That being said, I'm also going to use a new Boolean variable I put on Mario called force animation and set it to true. And this is now a check I do on all animation changes. If force animation is true, none of the changes happen. And this just stops Mario from automatically turning into the idle animation while he's sitting there doing nothing on the ground. Then we're going to set animation of Mario to our cur state plus pipe. And this will go ahead and grab our different states from Mario between small, big, and fire. And set it to the pipe animation, which the pipe animation is a weird face forward animation. Then we'll go ahead and set our global variable warp destination to the warp pipe variables destination. 
and we'll delete that warp hitbox. And you can bring this back later if you want to have this be a pipe that you can go in multiple times. But we're going to delete it here to make it act as if it's a trigger once without using the trigger once condition. And when all that's done, we're going to change the X position of Mario to the warp pipe's X position minus half of Mario's width. Since Mario's origin is in the top left corner of his hitbox, we want it to be centered on the center of Mario. So we're going to just divide his width by 2. Then we're going to start a timer called Pipe Down. And we'll also change the Z order to set Mario behind everything. Next we're going to be working with that Pipe Down timer we just set. And if it's greater than 1 second, we're going to go through all the different warp pipes. And we're going to find the one with the arrival variable, that is our global warp destination. And this is just us finding the destination and arrival match, so essentially finding our correct warp pipe. Next we can change the position of Mario to that warp pipe. And again we're going to use the warp pipe dot x minus Mario's width divided by 2, and then the warp pipe's y. Then we need to change the camera. Since we had it set up to follow Mario before and ignore the y position, we're just going to turn it off and set it to a set position in our secret room. Since it's just one room large, we don't need to follow Mario anymore. And we'll set that position and then we'll just set it back to following Mario once we pipe out. Next we're going to go ahead and delete the pipe down of Mario from memory. And we're going to stop all forces and then wait 0.1 seconds and start a new timer called pipe down arrival. So that covers after one second. So during that one second of Mario doing pipe down, this is him going into the initial pipe. We're just going to add a instant force. And since it will be happening the entire time that Mario's pipe down is between that zero and one second time, it'll slowly move him down at a continual 28 pixels. So that covers going into the pipes. Next we need one for going out. And we set that up with the pipe down arrival timer that we started in our previous bit of code. And while that's under one second, we're going to be forcing Mario again. And I did 18 pixels this time. It just lined up better visually. And then when that pipe down arrival is greater than or equal to one second, we'll go ahead and destroy it and turn back on the behavior platformer object for Mario and turn off the force animation, which was stopping new animations. So we are back to normal. And that's it. You now have the ability to warp. Of course, I highly recommend you give them a way to warp out of this new trap I created. But otherwise, this should be everything you need to add warp pipes to your games. If you bumped into any issues or have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. And otherwise, until next time, peace.